Hi YouTube, 133 megahertz, bringing you a totally useless experiment. Today I'll be playing uh, the same game on two different gaming systems at the same time. For that purpose I have built a special electronic circuit that basically takes the input from one controller and sends it to both an NES and a Super NES system at the same time. So running the same game on both systems, they should be exactly the same, given the same set of inputs. Uh, this is not this is not as easy as it might seem. It's not like taking the controller wires and splicing them together, because the Super NES has more controller buttons than the NES, and as such, it reads the controller data at a much lower speed in comparison to the NES. So my circuit take the input from a Super NES controller and decode it to the, into the individual button presses and send those button presses equally, re-encode them in NES and Super NES format. So I'll be taking Super Mario Bros. 1, 2 and 3 on the NES and I'll be comparing them to their Super NES counterparts on Super Mario All-Stars. So without further ado, let's give it a go. So, here is Super Mario Brothers. Damn. <coughs> the problem is that it, it eventually desynchronizes one game with the other, no, no matter how hard I try. So I have to keep them synchronized. like here have to fill myself. didn't work.
Okay, let's move on to Super Mario 2. And here is Super Mario 2. And finally, Super Mario 3.
So, in conclusion, the games are different enough that they will eventually desync with each other. You cannot keep you cannot keep them synchronized for more than the first stage. And so that's it. Thanks for watching.